yeah how is time period of a simple pendulum calculated i'm asking about the formula yes <clears throat> so, time taken by and uh, number of uh, okay. number of oscillations that is being done okay very good okay now so that is something which we have done. in fact we learned about the frequency also and so frequency becomes supposed for frequency it's the number of oscillation upon the time taken to complete those oscillations okay now i suppose you guys have noted it down in your notebook okay now so that later on you won't be having trouble in revising it okay now so today our discussion will begin with the speed okay now so there are two devices normally installed in a vehicle, speedometer, odometer, we know a speedometer, it measures the current speed of the vehicle, the speed at which the vehicle is moving. Odometer will be telling the distance that has been traveled by the vehicle so far in kilometer or in some vehicle it will be in miles. Okay. Furthermore, uh, you guys do these questions. After having done this question now, we will be learning about how we can convert. Yeah, was you can share it there. Okay, no? Okay, sir. On the team's number, you can share it there. Okay. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Furthermore, an important thing to be noted down that in the odometer, usually the distance is measured in kilometer per hour. Okay. You guys solve these questions, do these questions, and then we are going to continue further. Okay. Question number, this question you can skip for now. It will be later on. When we'll be learning about time, there we'll be learning about sundial in detail. Okay. So don't do this one. One minute. A, B, C, D, and E. Just answer in the class. Okay. Now I want to save the time and we have to complete the chapter on time. What's the answer for question number A? A horse that is pulling a cart. So what kind of movement is being done? Is it oscillatory, circular, or linear? All of you turn your cameras on in the class. And uh, all of you start answering these questions. Twink, are you there in the class? I suppose mm -hmm. I'm multiple to everyone. Yeah. What so kind of it, movement is here? Yeah. So C. That is C. Good. Okay, now so a horse is pulling a cart and it's doing a linear motion. It's pulling the cart in a straight line. Okay. The speedometer of a vehicle measures the speed in. Yes, Abu Bakr, Priyanka, and was the speedometer measures the speed in which unit? Beta per second, meter per minute. Or is it kilometer per hour? Uh, kilometer per hour. Mm. Okay. Next, an example of the oscillatory motion is we have learned about the oscillatory motion. The body will be oscillating. It will be doing a to and fro movement, forward and backward, forward and backward. Sir, so motion of swing. Motion of a swing. Very good. Okay, now. A device used to measure the distance moved by a vehicle. Yes. Moments ago, we have learned about this. Yes, was Abu Bakr. A device used to measure the distance moved by a vehicle. Is it odometer, speedometer, or both? An automator, total distance moved by the vehicle. Exactly, no? Okay. Answer the last question. If the speed of an object along a straight line keeps changing, its motion is stated. Okay, we'll be uh, doing this one, by the way. Okay, now. Question number three, skip that. We'll be learning about it. Okay. Okay. Talking about the types of speed. Okay, we have learned about what is the speed. This distance traveled by an object in a given unit period of time is called as a speed. That's how we define a speed now. A speed is the 
distance traveled by an object in a given unit time. That is what the speed is. That's why we get to hear a vehicle is moving with a speed of 90 km per hour, 120 km per hour. So 120 km per hour, meaning that in one hour, a distance of 120 km has been covered. Okay. Further, speed is of two types. If an object is constantly traveling a, a fixed distance in equal interval of time, in same time gaps, it is said to have a uniform speed. What do you mean to say by this? Take for example, there is this vehicle for example. Okay. It takes about 5 minutes to go from 10 km to 20 km. It again takes 5 minutes to go from 20 km to 30 km. And here again it takes 5 minutes to go from 30 km to 40 km. So what we are saying that this vehicle is covering equal distance in a same interval of time. Have you shared something? Or have you shared it with the team? Okay, I haven't received it yet. Yes, I, have, I haven't got it by the way yet. Okay. So guys, what you have observed, isn't the time interval same? The time gap is same? Yes, right? sir. Right, Priyanka and Abubakar? Yes, sir. And the distance that is being covered in 5 minutes is also same. Each time it is 10 km. So such a, when such kind of movement is being done by a vehicle, so that vehicle or the body is said to be have a, said to have a uniform speed. That's the case. But when you look at the other object here, what can you say about this object here? In the first part of the journey, it covered 25 km in 10 minutes. In the other part of the journey, it covered 5 km, just 5 km in 10 minutes. Getting it done? Yes, of course. Nothing, sir. Just fill up the cup of water. So what we're seeing here, that this unequal distance is being traveled here. In the given time period, unequal distance is being traveled. Okay, no? So that vehicle might be stuck in the traffic. That's why the speed slowed down now. It covered only 10, uh, 5 km in a duration of 10 minutes. Earlier, it covered 25 km in duration of 10 minutes. So when a vehicle, when a body will be covering different distance in different time gaps. It is said to have a non-uniform speed. Getting it, guys. It is said to have a non-uniform speed. Or for example, take the example of the motion of this bouncing ball. How much of movement it is going to do? The first time it is going to jump, it will be covering the highest distance. It will jump highest. Next time it will jump to this height. Next time it will be jumping to this height. So that is again a non-uniform motion. No? Every time it is jumping to different height okay now every time it is jumping to different height okay so that is again a non-uniform motion in the nature we have some examples of like the motion of the clock in the given period of time a fixed a fixed uh, fixed uh, distance will be covered by the hour hand or the minute or the second hand okay take the example of motion and a motion of the earth around the sun and on its axis. That is also uniform motion. That is again a uniform motion. Okay, no? Okay. You guys tell me, what's the exact time taken by the earth to do rotation? Exact, I'm asking. Sir, uh, rotation or revolution? Rotation, rotation. Exact time, I'm asking, not the average. Because we know 24 hours is not exact. So I think it's 23 hours, 58 minutes. Or something, sir. What, what about you, Pinko? And Abu Bakr? Just... It's actually sir, 20... I know that it is 23 hours. And then I don't know the name. 23 hours and 56 minutes and 4 seconds. Okay, now that is the time taken by the earth to complete one rotation around the around its axis and what is the exact time taken by the earth to complete one revolution yes like this is a general thing i'm asking not really related to the topic we're discussing i thought a general question one should know of it's basically 365 days six hours and nine minutes getting it all of you 
365 days and uh, in uh, hours it is 6 hours and it is 9 minutes all right no okay anyways let's continue okay that is one thing now further if someone asked you let us say that you went to a journey okay now so at uh, at a given so like you you would be driving the vehicle at different speeds at different places so if someone were to ask you what was the average speed at which you was driving the vehicle at what what was the average speed so average speed basically means that the what was the average speed of the vehicle during the duration during the during covering that distance what was the average speed so the average speed is calculated by dividing the dis total distance traveled by an object divided by the total time it must have taken to cover that distance i mean to say say in the uh, in this example what is the total distance covered by the body 25 plus 5 km now average speed we are trying to calculate the so total distance is how much Priyanka? it is 30 km. 30 km very good and the total time taken by the person is 20 minutes 20 minutes okay now so 20 upon 30 or uh, 30 upon 20 okay now so it was 1.5 kilometer per minute getting it guys so in one minute the vehicle was uh, covering a distance of 1.5 kilometers so that was the average speed getting it what i'm trying to say that yes, does sir. not tells you the specific speed at which you were driving but you have calculated the overall average speed okay no that's the case okay so hope these three concepts are clear you guys answer this question Sir, in chat box? No, in the class only. Thank you, sir. Sir, average speed. Okay, what about others? Yes, I'm waiting. Answer it quickly, guys. That is average speed now. Why you guys are taking this much of time to answer? That is average speed now. Yeah, Bubaka, that is correct. Okay. So as moments ago we learned, average speed is basically the total distance traveled by the object divided by the total time it takes. Okay. That is the thing. Okay. Okay. Before we continue to learn about uniform and non-uniform further, you guys solve one question to me. Okay. Question is that a vehicle travel a distance of 30 kilometer in two hours and then and then and then it one minute so vehicle travel a distance of 30 km in 2 hours and then it increase the speed to 35 km i mean to say increase the speed and travel 35 km in 1.5 hour Calculate the average speed. You guys understood what you have to do? Yes, sir. Okay, no? So it was kind of like this. See that the vehicle in the first part of the journey covered 30 km, let's say from point A to B, in two hours. Then increase the speed and cover a distance of 35 km in 1.5 hours. So what was the average speed of the vehicle that's the question a sir? b and c yeah 
I'm in this. I have a, a doubt. Yes. Like I know the formula, but then there's two uh, numbers. Yeah, there is two number. So what should we do? Just go go by the formula. The formula of the average speed is total distance travel yes. divided by total time taken. The total distance add them and divide it by the total time taken. Right now. So add them. Yeah, you have to add the total distance here and then divide it with the time. Okay, sir. Okay, no. Sir, you have to calculate the average speed of like both. Uh, you have to calculate the average speed of both the parts of the journey combined or separately. No, no. Average speed by definition, what does the average speed say? Huh? By definition, average speed is the total distance traveled divided by the total time taken by the object. Huh? So it yes, is not calculated. Uh, sir, sir, but it, uh, the speed has increased. So we can like uh, uh, calculate it separately. So the 30, uh, 30 kilometer upon two hours and then and then we can add both of them. No, no, not in that manner. Go by the formula was okay. Now just add that given distance and divide it by the given time here. Okay, now total okay. distance will be sixty-five kilometer divided by two plus one point five. That is three point five. Okay, I'm trying to okay. reconnect the camera. There's some glitch here. Yeah, Mark's working. Sir? Yes, Priyanka. For the two hours uh, plus 1.5 hour, mm -hmm. the 3.5? Yeah, that will be 3.5, of course. Okay, sir. You can just uh, give the estimated answer. If the answer is coming in decimal, just write the whole number. You can leave the uh, leave the decimal part. Okay, no? Okay, sir. By now, it's all about calculation. So do it fast. Anyone of you done? 65 upon 3.5. Sir, I got 1.2. How can it be 1.2? No. Not 1.2. Remove the decimal here and the numerator will be multiplied with 10. So now it is 650 upon 35. Sir, 18.5. Exactly. Okay, now we're getting 18.5. Well done. Yes. Course. Okay, now see, this is the answer all of you should be getting. 
ओके ना सम ऑफ यू नीड टू वर्क ऑन द डिवीजन ओके ना सम ऑफ यू नीड टू वर्क देन रिपीट अगेन यू शुड मल्टीप्लाई विद 10 या लाइक व्हेनेवर यू रिमूव द डेसिमल इफ देयर इज अ डेसिमल वैल्यू इन द डिनोमिनेटर एंड इफ द डेसिमल पॉइंट इज रिमूव्ड सो द न्यूमिनेटर गेट्स मल्टीप्लाइड विद 10 राइट ना सर मल्टीप्लाई विद 10 okay i like without doing so also you could have multiplied or divided it anyways the answer would be 18.5 so 18.5 km per hour was the average speed which with which uh, with which the person was driving it okay na but see if you were to ask to calculate the speed of the vehicle while it was moving from a to b then that would have been how much quickly tell me without even doing the calculation you can answer this divide 15. this 15 no well then 15 km per hour what about here it will be it will be more than 20 of course right now it will be more than yes. 20 but the average speed overall average speed is 18.5 km okay na so that is it it will be more than 20 by the way okay that's it okay further there's one important thing while we have been learning about speed an important thing to be discussed here was the si unit of speed the si unit of speed is meter per second what is it it is meter per second got it everyone now okay so that is meter per second either written as meter per second like this or sometimes it will be written like this meter per second okay now both the thing are same thing both of these are the same thing That is only. Sir, but no one uses meter per second in daily life. Yeah, like in daily life we don't measure it, but in the uh, SI unit it is uh, measured in this. Okay, now. Okay, all of you should be having some basic idea about the SI unit. Okay, now SI unit is basically like in it's a French word. It came from the Systeme International. It came from a French word Systeme International. Okay, now or basically the international system of unit is the. metric system that is used all around the world like it as a, it is taken as a standard for measurement of different quantities okay na like for example uh, you would be measuring the time in second in the si unit length in meter mass in kilogram electric current in ampere heat in kelvin ha huh? or amount of substance in higher classes you will be learning about other units of uh, other si units also and for speed it is meter per second anyways let's get back to the topic another important thing as i said to you guys that after our discussion about the speed will be over we'll be learning about how we can convert from meter per second to kilometer hour or vice versa okay na okay to convert from meter per second to kilometer per hour okay let's understand what we have to do or what we have to do if you have to convert from kilometer per hour to meter per second let's do the first one okay Sir, this is the question I got wrong in the exam. Oh, okay. In this one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Same question. Okay, now we'll be getting it correct. Okay. See that one kilometer per hour. I have to convert this into meter per second. Okay. One kilometer per hour. Can I write it like this? One kilometer upon one hour. It's literally the same thing. One kilometer in meter will be how much? One thousand meter, right? Priyanka and Abu Bakr. Yes, sir. One thousand meter. Okay, convert hour into second. The first we have to convert into minute, no? Yeah, sixty. Sixty minute. Okay. Sixty. And sixty. Exactly. So one hour we have to convert this into second. Okay, but first has to be converted into. Uh, I mean to say, uh, has to be converted into minute, no? So one hour has sixty minute, okay. And how many seconds are in one minute? Sixty second is there in one minute, no? So sixty minute will be having sixty times sixty seconds, no? Sixty multiplied sixty second. Oh, getting it, everyone? This is the part in which some of you might be getting confused. Priyanka, have you understood this? Abu Bakr, have you understood this step? No, sir. Not getting it. Simply the thing is that one hour. Has how many minutes? Sixty minutes, yes, right? Sir. One minute has how many seconds? 
60 second no so if one minute has 60 second so 60 minute will have how much second if one minute has 60 second so 60 minute will be having how much second simply 60 multiplied with 60 abu bakar what about you priyanka you getting it yes sir uh, so now it's 1000 upon 3600 no? yes sir. cancel the zeros these two zeros in the denominator and the numerator is cancel okay now simplify it 5 2s are 10 2 18s are 36 so what you are getting 5 upon 18 okay 5 upon 18 we can uh, we can further get the value in decimals also so 5 times 3.6 gives you 5 times 3 5 times 3.6 gives you 18 so thereby the answer is 1 upon 3.6 or for convenience, I always see that just get the number 5 upon 18. Okay, now this is more convenient. Okay, so what we have done here one kilometer per hour in meter per second is 1 upon 3.6 meter per second. Okay, now or just do one thing if you find the decimal confusing, many times students find the decimals to be confusing to understand or use. So just use this value, 5 upon 18 meter per second. Getting it, everyone, what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. Okay. See. Just one minute. Don't know there's some glitch in the software. Every time I try to erase it, the page changes to the next page. So what we have learned right now that one kilometer per hour is equal to five upon 18 meter per second. So you guys tell me if I were to tell you that how much five kilometer per hour will be in meter per second? How much five kilometer per hour will be in meter per second? What we know if one kilometer per hour in meter per second is five upon 18. So 5 km per hour will be simply 5 multiplied 5 upon 18. No, isn't it? 25 upon 18 meter per second. Is everyone getting this or not? Yes, sir. Priyanka, you getting it? Abu Bakr, what about you? Yes, sir. Abu Bakr, you there in the class? You haven't responded. Okay, anyways, by the way, uh, an important thing, see, Abu Bakr in the previous class, what I noted down that, that you were answering on the other ID. In the previous class, you were answering in the other ID, and I thought you were not answering. So answer on this ID only, like whenever you are required to see something in the chat box now. So guys, answer on this ID. Okay, because from the other ID, I couldn't see uh, your chats. Okay. So that is something which we have learned right now. Okay. Further now tell me that if I were to require to convert from meter per second to kilometer per hour, see you have one meter per second Con to be converted into one kilometer per hour. Okay. So it is basically one meter upon one second. You guys tell me to convert meter into kilometer. What should be done? Should it be multiplied with thousand? Should it be divided with thousand? Yes. Can you repeat the question? To convert meter into kilometer. One meter has to be converted into kilometer. Uh, so that should be what? Like you have to divide by 100 or I mean to say divide by 1000 or multiply by 1000. Note this thing down that whenever a bigger quantity is uh, converted into a smaller quantity. Remember earlier we had to convert kilometer into meter. So we multiplied it with... Uh, Multiplied it with thousand now, but here yes. you are you are converting a small unit into a bigger unit, so you have to do division here. Okay, sir. Getting the rule now. All of you, Abu Bakr, cause Prinka, yeah. So it will be one meter upon one thousand. Okay, now. Understood this. Okay. 
now you have to divide second also here now so second has to be converted into meter minute first and then for minute you'll be converting into hour remember earlier you have multiplied uh, divided with this now i mean to say to convert hour into second you multiplied it with 60 and then again with 60 to get it in second remember you multiplied it now now here you are going to divide it here you are going to divide it so it will be like this 60 times 60 okay zero zero and this zero cancel you have 36 upon 10 after simplification that is 18 upon 5 or simply 3.6 in decimal it is 3.6 kilometer kilometer per hour kilometer per hour is this clear to everyone what we have done here yes is the thing clear to everyone or not please let me know i think this step so, might be confusing this one and this one yeah so for the second you uh, made 60 into 60 uh, right let me explain that okay now what i have done here a golden thing you have you all if you have to mention uh, remember here okay now say a upon b okay if it is being divided with another fraction there is this fraction a upon b and it is being divided by another fraction let us say divided by c upon d so all if you would have learned about this previously or in, in the mathematics class that the division sign will be changed to multiplication and the other fraction the second fraction becomes a reciprocal that becomes a d upon c isn't it yes sir everyone knows this now Priyanka and Abubakar you guys also okay now look at this number pay attention to this one meter to convert into kilometer we had to divide it by thousand right or wrong tell me simple thing we have to convert second into hour now okay so you have one second to convert this into hour do we have to multiply it with 60 into 60 i mean to say 3600 or should i multiply it to convert second into hour what should i do so divide divide now why you guys are silent in the class abu Bakr and priyanka you guys not getting it it is important that all of you participate in the discussion in the class if at any particular point in the class you're having doubt stop me there tell me to explain it again sir huh? okay Penga, you getting it what i'm trying to say let me give an, give a small example to you tell me that one meter equals to how much centimeter one so meter equals to 100 centimeter now yes, right sir. how did we calculated it basically we multiplied 100 to this now one into 100 equals to 100 and centimeter what we are doing here we are moving we are moving down from a bigger quantity to a smaller quantity which one is the bigger quantity out of the two meter or centimeter it's meter meter so when we go from a bigger quantity to a smaller quantity so we multiply but if i were to ask you one centimeter equals to how many meter like you think about this like you have uh you have an inch tape like you have a you have a ruler a big ruler and that that measures one meter let's say so the one meter will be having 100 equal divisions that will be having 100 centimeter but you have so just point, mm -hmm. so 0 0.01 0.01 very good very good no so how did you calculate it you calculated it by dividing it with 100 now basically 1 upon 100 you have div done division here with 100 now so that is 1 upon 100 equals to 0 0.01 meter okay now so here again we are going from a smaller quantity smaller unit to a bigger unit so we have to do division now so first it has to be converted into minute now you can't directly convert it into hour so you have to first from second you convert it into minute then i should be dividing it with 60 
for the next time i have to uh, i have to again convert it into so again i'm dividing it with 60 okay now and the reason why i'm writing this multiplication here because whenever you write two or more than two numbers on the denominator like this so all of them gets multiplied okay this much okay, should be clear to everyone now okay yes, so guys pay close attention to what i'm going to do right now this one and this one okay both of them were being divided here now like here you have this meter and second both of them are being are in division or not aren't they in division tell me so they are in division they are in division now yes pinka okay what rule did i told you guys what happens here when there are two fractions and the division side changes to multiplication now yes sir. one meter upon 1000 the division sign changes to multiplication and thereby the it reverses now it's one upon 60 into 60 but now it will be 60 into 60 upon one okay now so thereby these two zeros will be cut this will be cut this will be cut six six are 36 which i have written and 10 is written over here one and one that makes no sense basically cut understood this understood the maths behind this now yes sir so there you get 3.6 kilometer so simple thing is that either 18 upon 5 or just take 3.6 to convert from kilo to convert from the meter per second to kilometer per hour you have to multiply by 3.6 but to convert from kilometer to per uh, kilometer per hour to meter per second, we have learned earlier, you have to divide by 3.6. Okay, now I would like that all of you write down this thing. Okay, now write down this thing in your notebook, in your copies, write down this thing so that you will be able to revise it. Okay. Or either you can just write down this thing. That is the useful thing here. Okay. Let me just put it on charge. Do let me know once you guys flip it done. Okay. Yes, I suppose by now you should be done. You guys done? No, sir. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Priyanka, you also do it quickly. Okay, sir. So just memorize this golden rule that this thing is of uh, most important. This is most important. Thing. To convert from kilometer per hour to meter per second, simply divide by 3.6. Okay. And vice versa it's basically 3.6 multiplied by 3.6 after this we are going to then, do some questions good abu bakar you also done okay let's consider a situation where an object is traveling at a uniform speed of 50 km per hour what will that mean so when the vehicle is started to run, when the object is started to run from uh, from rest, okay, initially both of them would be covering uh, like uh, it will be a zero hour time, the distance would be zero when they are at rest. But when they was uh, like when it had uh, uh, like when one hour passed, so vehicle travel a distance of 50, another hour passed, vehicle travel a distance of 100 and so on and so on. It's like this. So what we see that, when you look at the difference in the time and the difference in the distance path that is being traveled by the body. So what is the difference here? And the difference here? You see? So difference is 50. Right now, so 50 minus 0, that is difference is 50 kilometer. 
here again it is 100 minus 50 that is again how much 50 kilometer and here it's 150 minus 100 so we are getting 50 kilometer in each situation when you calculate the difference in the time 1 minus 0 that is 0 2 minus 1 that is 1 like this okay so what do we see that the body is traveling at equal it is traveling covering equal distance in equal interval of time so when uh, we are will be plotting a graph for such a, a body now the graph will be like this you can all of you be aware of the basics of the graphs huh? do yes, tell sir. me like have you learned about the basics of the graphs in mathematics yes sir yes sir okay okay uh, let me ask you questions of this you guys tell me like what is uh, abscissa and what is ordinate here what is the abscissa and ordinate in this graph? What is not in this graph, but in, basically in any graph, what is abscissa and what is uh, ordinate, coordinates? Ordinate, I mean to say. We didn't learn that. Yes, sir, we didn't learn that. Not that, okay, okay. Then just tell me what is the y-axis and x-axis? Sir, y axis is the vertical, uh, is the vertical line, x axis is the horizontal line. Okay, very good. Okay, and the place they where they will be meeting that will be called as the uh, yes, so what the place where the x and the y axis on a graph will be meeting, what we call that that's the origin. Okay, no, yes, that's the origin. So that is the origin that is represented by O and it is the origin. Okay, now origin and this is the X axis. This is the Y axis. Let me tell you some basics of this before we continue our discussion. Okay, now see we have a graph paper like this. Okay, in your practical notebooks, you might be having this at the back of the book. Okay, so what we see that in a graph paper, this is the horizontal, this is the vertical angle. That is one thing. Okay, further. With the help of the graph, we represent numbers or we rep we get to know some information. Some information is displayed here in the in the gr graph paper. So say, for example, this is the graph paper and the distance between zero and X point here is being divided into two parts. Okay, it's being divided into two parts. Like this is zero, this is one and say that this is two. Okay, and let's say that the distance on this axis is again being divided into two parts. Let's say it is 10, it is 20. It is 10 and it is 20. Okay. Now let us see that uh, this one shows you on the x axis some information is given here. Let's say that it shows you the number of uh, students in a class. Number of students. Okay. On the y axis, the information given is the marks scored by them. Marks scored in maths, for example. That is in the y axis. What is all this? This is all the information that is being displayed on these axis. Getting it, guys? Okay. So you guys tell me how many students got 10 marks in mathematics. So in order to check this information, what we have to do? We have to draw a line like this. Okay, now? And we have to draw a line from here also. So the place where they are meeting here, like when you draw it, when you extend it here, so where is this lying here? It is lying above the one now. When I'm going to meet these two lines, it meets over here. All of you getting what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. Okay. So this point here, that is vertically above the X. Okay, no? And uh, it is uh, vertically above this Y axis. That is giving me some information. What is it giving me? It is giving me some information. So it gives me two information. It gives me the information like 1 and 10. Like this point on the X axis, it is corresponding to one. Now. Try to understand what I'm saying. This point here, it is uh, corresponding to the value one on the X axis, right? 
while this same point on the y axis is corresponding to 10 yes are you guys able to understand what i'm saying yes sir yes sir this is x and this is y so the thing is that the x is basically called as abscissa in mathematics we'll be learning about this in detail i think this much is only usually doubt in mathematics in ab abscissa and ordinate okay got this one that is abscissa and that is ordinate okay anyways so these were the basics of this which i thought you should be aware of coming back to the graph here let's try to plot the graph for this one let's try to plot the graph with the help of this data all right guys before we do that an important thing to be noted down is that on the x axis time is always displayed and on the y axis which information is displayed it is distance hope you guys will be keep um, will keep that in mind okay so using the data given in that table let us draw what did you guys uh, what did i told you guys moments ago on the x axis what do we plot we plot the you plot the time now and on the y axis we plot distance all right now okay okay so first of all we are going to take an appropriate scale i mean to say let's start like this let's start from here Priyanka, the graph work has been done in the school. Have you guys practiced questions on the graph? Um, yes, sir. Okay, good. Um, we did like uh, only one non-uniform and four uh, mm -hmm. uniform motion. Okay, okay. In the question, whatever unit of time is given, you you have to write it uh, right next to time. Okay, now like in that table, time was given in hour. Okay, now. And distance was in which unit? Distance was in kilometer, no? Okay, the data given were as follows. Time 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the distance travels traveled by the body were as follows. It was 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, uh, 250 like this, right now? Okay, let's try to plot it. Let's do one thing. Uh, we have to divide the divide this square blocks appropriately here. Okay, now. <clears throat> so let's uh, divide it like this. Let's say that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and on like this. All right, now. Let's divide this one also. How much should I take this? Let's take the division of 50 now. Right? Okay, now you guys can see here that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm taking that 10 square here equals to how much? 50 kilometer. Getting what I'm trying to say? So that is 50. This one will be then 50 plus 50. That is 100, 150, 200, 250 and so on like this okay now you can go on to write some more, more values like 300 and 350 all right now you guys look at the table given here at one hour how much of distance has been covered by the body at one hour eight kilometer 50 now so should i not place a point here yes sir okay now let me use which color should be visible okay this one will be visible okay now, Abu Bakr, you will be telling me at two hour, how much of distance is covered? It is 100 given here. Okay. Should I place the point here or should I place the point here? Sit down. Down now? Right here. Okay. And for the third one, was it's 150. So, should I place it here, here, or here? Or here? Where Sir. should I? Sir, uh, like uh, right diagonal to the two lines. The point where I'm holding it right on the place where I'm holding the point right over here. Okay. 
Similarly, at four hour, the speed is the distance is two hundred, right now. And at the fifth hour, the distance traveled is two hundred fifty kilometer. Okay, all right now. Okay, now you guys can note down this thing that this is one comma fifty. This one is two comma hundred. Remember abscissa and ordinate. Remember. Moments ago, yes. I told you abscissa and ordinate. One is abscissa, fifty is ordinate. Two is abscissa, hundred is ordinate. So here the abscissa will be in this one. So Look at three. the value that is three now, and the ordinate will be one fifty. Here again, abscissa will be four, and the ordinate is two hundred. And here now it is five, and then two fifty. Okay. The important thing which we have to do, we have to. Uh, we have to join all these lines. What we are going to do, we are going to add this. So when, when you will be doing it actually on a paper, just take a ruler and join all the points very carefully. Like this. So are you guys getting a straight line or not? We are getting a straight line now? Yes, sir. Yes. Getting it, guys? So that is the thing. So the distance, this is the distance time graph. What is it? This is a Distance time graph. time graph. Okay, so we have plotted a graph between the distance and time, and this is called a slope. What is is this called as? This is called a slope. If the slope is a straight line, so thereby the graph is showing the information of a uniform speed. When you will be plotting the graph, and if you get a straight slope now, this is a straight slope. So thereby, that is the graph of a uniform body, a body move, uh, doing a uniform motion, okay now? Moving with a uniform speed. So hope it should be clear. All right now? Yes. Okay. In the next class, I will be asking you to do an exercise. So you'll be required to bring a, a graph paper in the class, okay now? You can have, like, this is the, the steps that are being dictated. Okay, now, like how you have to do it. So when I will be provide, providing the PPT, if you forget it by reading these steps, you can uh, revise it. Okay, now. Okay. So, so that if is we don't it. have graph paper, like, can we just take a notebook paper and make a square on it, one centimeter squares? Sure, we can do that, but that will be taking uh, some time. The time will be wasted. If you happen to have a printer. Yes, sir, I have a graph paper. Okay, you also don't have. Okay, then just using a piece of paper also, I suppose you guys will be able to do that. How you'll be able to do that? Basically, make sure that the interval that you will be taking here should be uniform. Okay, no? You can yes, take sir. a piece of ruler like this and take the divisions of one centimeter, one centimeter, one, one like this. Okay, no? That you'll be able to do with the help of a ruler. Okay. Okay, uh, I thought to discuss about the uh, non uniform motion, but that we'll be doing in the next class. Okay, okay, now an important thing I would like to discuss before we conclude the class. So far, we have learned about like when an object will be doing the uniform motion, the body, uh, the graph will be like this. But what if the object is not moving at all? What if the object is not moving at all? In that situation, what is going to happen? I mean to say that, say that the time keeps on increasing, but the body is not moving. Now, so let's say one hour. Like straight line. Yeah, but where or how it will be oriented? Let's say one hour passed, two hour has passed, huh? three hour has passed, four hour has passed, but the car is at the same position. The car is here. The car is not moving. So thereby, in the first hour, the position of the car was here. Thus, in the second hour also, the car is not moving. In the third hour also, in the fourth hour also. So that is Maybe. giving you a... Mm -hmm. So it's a straight line. Oh, yeah, it's a straight line, but it is parallel to the x-axis. Yes, sir. So when the object is at a rest position now, so that gives you a... Uh, parallel slope that is uh, that that gives you slope that is parallel to the x-axis. Okay, now so hope that is clear to everyone. Okay, 
before we end the class, you guys solve one one question for me. Okay, now all of you do one question. Do tell me that a, a vehicle is uh, is uh, um, covering a distance of three hundred kilometer in uh, in let's say six hour. So what will be the speed of the vehicle? A vehicle has traveled a distance of three hundred kilometer in six hour. What is the speed of the vehicle? Sir, fifty kilometer per hour. Okay. Let me change the unit now. Let's say that the vehicle has covered thirty miles in six hour. Then, sir, uh, sir, one mile is two point five kilometer, right? No. One mile is equal to one point six kilometer. Okay. Okay, sir. One mile. One mile is equal to one point six kilometer. The answer you guys have to give it give in kilo kilometer per hour. Okay, now convert miles into kilometer and then give me the answer. Of course, you have shared the sheet with me, now, but I still haven't got it. We have shared it about an hour, uh, about a, a half an hour ago, now. Yes, sir. Uh, on uh, in the the uh, in the team WhatsApp. Okay. Also said thirty.